Welcome back to another episode of Let's Build Twitter. In this episode, we start out by ironing out a couple of bugs on the front end that were still existing from the last episode, including the border on the blue next button, the checks boxes being smashed, and the next button overflowing off of the modal. Then we move back into Eclipse to work on the back end once again. We start out in the user service where we implement the load by username method from the user details service to be used by Spring Security for authentication. Then we install the dependencies and set up Spring Security OAuth server, including creating a public and private RSA key and creating a model class to actually hold those keys inside of our Java code. That way we can set up a JWT soon. As always, I'm Ethan or Unknown Coder, a professional technology trainer during the workday. Let's go ahead and hop straight into development. We need to fix up a couple bugs that I found throughout the last couple episodes. So let's go ahead and hop into VS Code. And the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and fix the black border around the sign up button. So we're gonna go into our folder here and into our register next button, wherever it's at. And here we need to go ahead and add a border none. So since we added a border radius, it added a border. So we're gonna say border none and save, that should be fixed. We're also going to fix the checkbox issue. So we're gonna go into checkbox.css, which is gonna be inside components, checkbox. Um, and then we actually need to make a checkbox.css, checkbox.css. We're going to link it in here. So we're gonna go ahead and import um, dot slash checkbox.css. And this is because we need to actually surround this inside of a div. So we're going to say um, div class name equal to check box dash container. And this is going to help us from getting smashed. So if I copy this and put it down here and do this. All I have to do is take this checkbox container, put it inside of a checkbox.css. And then in here, we're going to say width is 40 pixels so we're going to force it to be 40 pixels height is 40 pixels and then our margin is going to be zero and our padding will be zero save that will fix the checkbox issue then finally we are going to fix the register form four part so we need to go back into register form four and we need to get rid of the extra margin on the p tag right here we could probably just get rid of all of this honestly like so and save and that will fix that and it won't be smashed anymore. And then finally, the update number button on that modal is also kind of messed up. It keeps going over. So we're gonna go into step four. I guess I didn't need to change here. We're gonna change a couple of things. We're gonna change the check group margin bottom to five. So check group margin bottom to five. We're going to change the step input margin to 10 just a little bit smaller and then we're going to just change the subhead to 30 and that should give us the space that we need and that's all i wanted to work on i just wanted to fix those few bugs and then let's go ahead and hop into the back end so i want our primary focus to be on the back end and we're going to be working on the user service and some things like that uh, so this is going to be to set up our actual uh, spring security to create a jwt token so first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to open up all of this good stuff and i'm going to go into our services and go into user service so inside of our user service i'm going to go ahead and say implements user details service. So this is going to describe how we actually check a user. Go ahead and import that. And now we need to go ahead and also implement the get user by username, I believe. So if we scroll down, it's actually called load user by username. And this is gonna be very simple. We're just going to have our application user u is equal to user repo dot find by username we're going to pass in the username then we're going to say dot or else so if it's empty we're going to throw a new exception and this will throw a new username not found whoopsies found exception and this comes from spring security user not found there we go. So that will handle that and go ahead and import username not found. This should be a lowercase. This should come from like spring security. 
There we go. And then we need to set the granted authorities. That way Spring Security knows what it's allowed to do. So set granted authority. And we'll say authorities. So currently we don't really have any authorities. Um, we might set some later. You dot get authorities. And then we're going to say dot stream. Then we're going to say dot map. We're going to map the role to a new simple granted authority. So this is part of the user that we need to pass back the user detail. And this is going to say role dot get authority. And then we're going to collect. We're going to say collectors dot to set. So now we have our granted authorities and let me double check um, you dot get authorities dot stream dot map import simple authorities. We had to import collectors as well. There we go. And what is your problem? Import granted authority. Cool. So now we have our authorities. Now we make a new user details. This comes from uh, spring security new user. And this is going to take in the user dot get username. This is going to take in the user dot get password. And this is going to take in the authorities. So now the beauty of spring security is that it's going to have the username and password and everything. What we're going to be able to do, and we need to make sure this comes from core org that spring framework security dot user details. Uh, so this is going to be able to check the password against whatever password we pass it later on and check to make sure that the user is actually valid or not. So we don't have to do that. So it's a little bit easier. So this is what we need to set up to go ahead and set up our user service that will be used by Spring Security. And then next we need to go ahead and set up the new OAuth resource server. So I've done a lot of research on setting up JWDs and everything. Um, I did a video or I watched a video by Dan Vega explaining how the Spring Security team expects you to do it or wants you to do it. And it's using the OAuth server and using keys and things like that. So that's what we're gonna do. You'll see a lot of people doing like filters and things like that. This is much simpler. And if I remember, I'll try to either um, put Dan Vega's video in the description or I'm just shouting him out here. He does some great things. He doesn't necessarily do, um, I think he has like one full stack with like JWD and stuff. He he does small individual pieces, so we kind of have to piece things together, and that's what I had to do here. But still, he was a massive help. So what we need to go ahead and do now is actually add the OAuth resource server. So I'm going to go ahead and right click, go to Spring, and go into Add Starters, and I'm going to look for OAuth, and I want OAuth to resource server. And next, I'm only going to update the Palm. I'm not going to update the application properties. Let's go ahead and add that new part. All right, everything should be added. So now what we need to do is go ahead and go into our application.properties file. And we need to add in a couple of things. We need to add an rsa.private-key. And I'm sure there's a way to do this programmatically, but it's fine. So you go to class path, colon, colon certs, slash private dot pim. We're going to set these up in a second. RSA uh, dot public key. It's going to be equal to class path, colon certs, slash public dot pim. Now, obviously, you're not going to want to push the application up properties up to GitHub. So keep that in mind. I'm going to go into our application or our source main resources, create a new source folder. And I'm going to call this certs like so. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Um, let's see, delete that. Okay. I want it inside source main resources. Can just do a regular old folder, general folder. There we go certs and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to open up my footer i'm going to go into my back end footer back end i'm going to go into my source main resources certs and i'm going to get bash and let me full screen whoops and zoom in a little bit so again i got these straight off of van dega's video whenever he did this we're going to say open ssl gen rsa dash out key pair uh, dot pim 2048 
Okay, we're going to say open SSL RSA dash in key. And I spelled pair wrong, but PIM dash pub out dash out public dot PIM. So this should create a public key for me. And then we're going to say open SSL P uh, P K C S eight dash T T O P K eight dash inform PIM dash out form PIM dash no crypt dash in key pair dot pim i spelled key pair wrong dash out private dash pim this one i'm sure i spelled something correctly so let me double check everything let's see what happens okay let's see if we have okay we have our key pairs there so it seemed like everything worked out properly and if we come back into eclipse and refresh our application here or refresh our project uh refresh we have our certs, so that should all be good. Fingers crossed, everything works out. Now that we have our key pair set up, we actually have to, um, and if I didn't mention already, the, the key pairs and then the OAuth server is going to be generating our JWT tokens for us. It's also gonna make it so we don't have to do a whole bunch of filters like you see. So next we need to go ahead and create an RS, RSA key properties.java class. Uh, this is gonna go into our config folder. So I'm going to go into our config and make a new class and I'm going to call this RSA key properties. And this is going to hold some information for us. We're going to add at configuration on the top because we're using this and we're going to say prefix equal to RSA. Again, this is all set up from, oh, and this should be configuration properties. Instead, this is from a video by Dan Vega. He explains it a lot better. I'm just using it in my project. So we have a private RSA public key. Call this public key. We're going to have a private RSA private key. Call this private key like so and import these public key and private key um, spelled private wrong RSA private key much better and then we're gonna have a no argument constructor public R S A proper key properties and we'll also have a args constructor public RSA key properties this will take in rsa public key public and rsa private key except we can't say public because it's a keyword obviously there we go and we'll say this dot public key so the public key this dot private key is equal to private key. Cool. Now we need to do our getters and setters and that's just about it. We're just making this kind of like model to hold stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and say source getters and setters. I could have just done generate the other stuff too. It is what it is. It's fine. That should be good with our properties. We're going to be needing this in a little bit inside of our security config. Unfortunately, that's going to be it for today. If you guys enjoyed, please stick around for the next episode by hitting that subscribe button. You'll know exactly when it comes out, especially at that bell icon. If you did enjoy the content today, please sure leave a thumbs up. If you didn't enjoy it, leave a thumbs down. Either way, it helps out with the algorithm all the same. And finally, if you have any suggestions or feedback for me, make sure you leave a comment down below. With that being said, I appreciate you all for watching. Stay tuned for the next episode. Peace out, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.